Hi, welcome to Jerry Bickle Race Cars. I'm Steve, and here today I'm out in the shop with Bud Payton, one of our chassis fabricators that works in a fabrication shop. Uh, Bud's main duty is generally when the body, or when the chassis moves uh, down to his table, uh, the body goes on it. So all the uh, body tin work, tub work, windows, and one of the things we're going to talk about today or whatever is uh, 3 16 and quarter inch uh, brake and fire bottle lines. In the past, I think I've done a video where we showed our brake line kits, showed some of the tools uh, for operating and making brake lines and fire bottle lines, but never really did a demonstration of showing you the works of them. So today with Bud's help, I'm gonna get away from the guy that uses the computer with the clean hands and get to the guy that gets dirty hands. And uh, he's gonna do some demonstrations here for us. What we got set out here is some 3 16 uh, these happen to be stainless lines, right, yeah, Bud? Yeah, right. these are stainless lines. I would, again, in our catalog, I think I've said before, we have both the uh, regular galvanized 3 16 and quarter inch line. We primarily use nothing but stainless in the shop for the fabrication of the car. So we got 3 16 stainless, uh, quarter inch stainless, fire bottle, brake line, uh, tube nuts, tube sleeves, the benders that we use, and the roto flare tool that we use to do the 37 degree uh, flaring of the, of the uh, line itself. So from there, Bud, go ahead and just Give us a little take on it here. So, uh, whenever we start with the brake lines, uh, what you want to do is ensure that you get a nice square cut on the end of the line. Um, also, too, make sure there's no burrs on the end, and then make sure there's no burrs on the inside of the tube. Also, um, take the tube and insert it into the roto flare, uh, which there's there's different tubing sizes, so you can rock this thing back and forth. For it's we're three sixteenths there, eight inch there. Um, it goes all the way up to three quarters of an inch. But uh, insert it in there, bring this collar down, and I don't know if you can see there, but leave the tube extend about 3 seconds of an inch past the die blocks. And what that does is that's the area that's going to be flared. Uh, tighten it down. I'm going to help here because I showed Bud, you showed me earlier the wrench for giving it a good... We give it an extra crimp just to ensure it, it doesn't try to push back through the blocks. But uh, Take this tool here, and then basically it is creating a beveled edge on the end of the tube to hold the flare. Uh, you don't want to crank down too tight. It's better to go too loose than too tight. You can always back it out and reflare it. Uh, sometimes putting a little bit of oil or lubricant down in there helps oh, things out tremendously. And let's take it out of here. Now, we have a nice flare on the end of the tube. Um, whenever you take a look at it, visually inspect it and make sure that it's not lopsided or crooked because uh, then it won't fit on the fitting and seal properly. But uh, And then take a look at the end also to make sure there's no cracks in the end of the tube. Any splits or, Any splits or yeah. cracks. As long and as I, you got none of that, then you're ready to, to flare and move on. Uh, and I, I didn't bring a 37 degree fitting out here, which I can, but okay. now you're showing the tube sleeve going up against it, folks, the, and the, the tube, tube nut. The tube so. sleeve goes up against the flare, and the tube nut goes on, and then now it's ready to go up against your fitting. It completed a real nice okay. flare to seat against and, the 37 degree nail. And this is how all the 3 16 is done. Uh, quarter inch is basically the same way. You use different blocks in here, the same flaring tool, basically the same process. Uh, you want to show them some bending? Yeah, we're going to show some bending <coughs> techniques then or whatever for... Uh, when, when bending lines, um, you can do it by hand. Um, what I'll do here... These are the same benders we sell in our catalog. So and We use these in the shop same. there every day. But uh, being a, a small, thin line, you can do this by hand. And that's like a 90 degree bend right there. Um, if it helps out, you can put it in a bender. Put or the bender in the vise. Put yeah. the bender in in yep. the vise itself. And then uh, a lot of times what we'll do is I will take a pair of vice grips and clamp the tubing. So it doesn't want to pull on you, bud? So whenever you're bending at past 90, these things have a tendency to draw out and create a D-shape and it's no longer round. Sure. So by putting that in there, it ensures that it stays in place. You can bend all the way to oh. 180 degrees. Nice. Uh, 
Uh, same thing with the, with the quarter inch. Uh, quarter inch tubing is a little bit stiffer. Uh, recommend using the pliers to hold it in place. Um, and then these benders, they go all the way up to what, half inch, Steve? Yeah, yeah, yeah we stock them uh, yeah. from a 3 16 uh, quarter, which again, the break and fire bottle are our two most popular. Mm -hmm. We do keep a 5 16 uh, 3 8 becomes a pretty good popular bender for us, as well as the mm -hmm. half inch. Mm -hmm. And I guess some of those benders, but are even used to do some of the smaller molly tubing, Correct. construct a little Correct. bracket, Correct. tree and stuff on the chassis. So yeah. uh, one thing to remember whenever you're bending brake lines, if you've got a bend like this, you have to have so much area to be able to get into the blocks of the, of the flaring tool. So you need about an inch and a quarter of material right here um, to be able to get into the flaring tool properly to get a flare on the end of it. So you know, just be careful where your bends are. Sure. Sometimes you'll have to actually flare the end of the tube first before you put the bend in there. So it just every application is a little bit different. Sure, just like I guess your 180 that you did here, right, right. the tube nut and sleeve would have to either be installed. Right, this right here would no longer fit into the rotor tool, so you would have to flare the end of this first, then put it into the bender, and then create your bend. Sure. And then whenever you're doing that too, make sure that your tube nuts, or everything is slid into place. You don't want to put a bend to where this thing is not going to slide over properly. Sure. So just you know, think twice and bend once. So. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Well, hope these are some of the tips that help you. Uh, like I said, same tools that we sell in our catalog, used right here in the shop. That's how we got started doing that. People were asking us, what do you guys do? How do you use it? What do you do? So I hope this was a little tip today or whatever to uh, help you in the construction of your car with your brake and fire bottle lines. Uh, as always, if you uh, need any other assistance, feel free to give us a call. As I've said before, we're always here to help.